Hello, hello, dear, dear soul tribe. It's Karina, and I have a special guest today. It's my son. There he is. Let me try to line my finger up under his head. <laughs> He's home from school today. There he is. Hi, Arthur. You want to say hi? Hi. Hi. He's home from school today because he's sick and he's creating his um, monster book while I make this video for you. So today I want to talk to you about moving from surviving to thriving and how the heck do we do it, especially when we're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and weighed down by all of our burdens and our hugely busy schedules. So if you're interested, if you're someone who's sort of struggling with where they're at and you have a sense that there's more for you, but you're overwhelmed and you just don't know where to begin, then stay tuned. This is for you. So I'm going to start with what's the thing that so many of us are missing when we're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated and irritated and stressed and lost in patterns and behaviors that get us nowhere. <laughs> Often what's missing for us in that place is vision. Vision. Remember, like the skateboard brand? That was a popular skateboard brand when I was in junior high school. Um, those of you who are around my age will totally relate to that. That's off the topic. That's not what I'm talking about. It's about the grand vision. You know, setting your sights on something other than what you've been seeing reflected in the past. You see, because many of us, we come into this moment with residue, with our past with us. You know, we take our trauma from the past our old beliefs from the past and we continue to operate out of them and we expect the same in our future and so that can right there lead to even just feeling hopeless and depressed and frustrated and stressed out right and some of you you totally know this you're like I visioned <laughs> made vision boards I've done that and it doesn't work or I'm still struggling you know so even if that's the case for you I'm not just talking about making a vision board here all right what we need is a lot deeper than that so I'm gonna give you three simple steps yet deep steps to take you from surviving to thriving through the practice of visioning so if you haven't already done so go ahead and get some water or some tea. Make yourself comfortable. Or some zombies. Or some zombies. You know, <laughs> you might want to get some zombies. Um, make yourself comfortable. Yeah. Pause this video if you need to, because I really want you to engage in this activity. Like, if you, one thing that happens when we get in this mindset is we stop trying to do anything new because we have this belief now in place that nothing works. So if that's happening for you, I want you to like, you know, stop it, just stop it, pause the video, get your journal out, begin again, okay? Because if you keep thinking like that, you'll just keep getting what you're getting. And that's not what we want, right? I don't think so. And I'm gonna start out by saying that this first step is just in getting really clear about where we are. This is a step that we often don't even, you know, I've done visioning before. I've taken, you know, I've, I've done classes where we've made vision boards, but this step is never, has never been visited. And I feel like it's critical and it's extremely important to address the residue, the stuff we bring in to our visioning, the stuff we bring into this moment. If we don't want to be weighed down by it, we need to air it out. We need to give it space to be expressed. And my favorite way to do that is through journaling. And so you have your journal now, and this is something I have all of my clients do as part of my 12-week program called Reclaim Your Peace. This is a foundational aspect of that program. We engage in a meditative writing practice that I learned from Natalie Goldberg in her awesome book called Writing Down the Bones. 
writing down the bones. If you don't have it, get it, especially if you're a writer, especially if you've written before and you want to reconnect with your love of writing. And I feel like there's probably a few of you there here right now who could say yes to that. Um, get that book. But anyway, I'll give you the shorthand version. So she suggests purging your mind, writing down first thoughts as a daily practice. And to do this, it's not a composition. We don't have an agenda. We're not like trying to communicate anything. You get your paper, your journal, you have your pen out, and you're just going to write whatever comes to mind. It doesn't have to make sense. It won't make sense. Don't worry about punctuation. Don't worry about writing clearly. Write in a way that feels good. Put your whole body into it. Write down your bones. You can begin with what blocks me is, or you can start with something like what scares me is, or you know, depending on what you typically work with, if fear's your thing, if anger's your thing, then like start with that. What pisses me off is, and see where it goes. Trust your impulses, trust your gut sense, and just let your pen move. Can't stop for five minutes. Begin by just closing your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Do that two more times. Deep breath in. Exhale, size it out. Last time breathing in. And sigh it out. Breathe out. Breathe the zombie out. Okay, and now with your pen in your hand, just start writing. Step two is to begin to incline the heart towards warmth. And so after you've purged your mind, you draw a line under what you wrote, and then take some moments to write down at least three things, preferably 10, but to start three things that right now in your life you're grateful for. Make it real and honest. Like you may know you should be grateful for stuff and maybe you're just not feeling it and that's okay. Instead, just close your eyes and feel into your body and just sense, what am I grateful for? Like just what naturally sort of arises for you? Maybe it's just your breath. Maybe it's that you're well today. Like really connect feel like I am grateful for that. Thank you. And then see what comes to mind really naturally and organically from that place of I am really grateful for this. Like put your hand on your heart, drop your awareness literally into your chest. You know, if you have a connection to source or to vast wisdom or to God, to some <coughs> thing that is both part of you and beyond you, then, you know, sense, like, express that message of gratitude to that, to the divine, to source, to God. So your intention literally begins to shift the arising of future phenomenon. And part of opening up towards thriving and joy and vision is this portal of gratitude as we begin to warm the heart and sense the possibilities, just sense the beauty, beautiful things you already have in your life. And so take the time to be grateful, not because you should, not because good people do that, but because it feels so good and you love yourself. Now the last aspect of this practice is the visioning piece. So you're going to draw a line again under your gratitude writing. And the next piece of this begins with the question again, you're gonna write it down. If money or fear were no object, what do I want? What, what would I want for my life? What would I want for my family? What would I want for my career? What would I want for my relationships? What would I want for my physical body, okay? So you can even think of it in, the qu in quadrants, right? One quadrant would be relationship, one quadrant would be career, 
One quadrant would be physical health. The other quadrant could be um, well-being, like spirit, like your spiritual life or your practice, whatever that is for you. Take five minutes with each quadrant, so that's 20 minutes. Okay, I think you have like a half an hour to do this for yourself. So just begin, set your timer five minutes and go. Don't worry about how, don't worry about if, don't worry about, well, is it possible? You know, you're gonna have lots of doubting thoughts. And this is where faith comes into play because as you're doing this, you're going to have to choose faith. Faith is actually the only thing that's probably even getting you to do this part. So keep continuing to choose faith. Faith is, Arthur's asking what faith is. Faith is this sense, this trust, it's this trust, Arthur, that everything's going to turn out okay. And that my dreams may actually come true. Okay? Everything's going to be okay. Exactly. Yeah. And he says, except the bad ones. And my dreams are going to come true except the bad ones, like that's a pretty right on definition of faith, don't you think? We usually, most of us have faith in our bad dreams and we don't even realize it. Let's start choosing faith in our good dreams. But before we can do that, we have to actually take the time to dream them. So vision, vision, and then with that vision and that path, Set out before you really look at it. Take those statements out of your visioning piece of writing that you want to build. And sense, how can you, what can you do this week, this month, in the next six months and in the next year to move yourself closer? So then take action, put it in your calendar. You know, if my goal is to, um, which is actually one of my um, pieces of my vision, is to build, or is to um, redo my website. Um, not to totally redo it, but to make it better. So I can vision that, you know, I know that that's going to help me in my business. So what am I doing though? And so I have actual steps in my calendar, you can see that, where I'm addressing those things. I'm taking little steps and I have them planned in my calendar so I know I'm moving close to that goal. When you start taking action towards your dreams, your good dreams, when you start taking action then things start to happen in that direction and then you build even more faith and hope and trust and joy and you're feeling really good again. Right? You're remembering your why. You're remembering who you are. You're remembering your power. You're remembering that you have choice again. So I hope those three steps, remember number one was just purging, doing the mind dump. Number two, gratitude. Number three, that vision. If money and fear were not an object, were not part of the equation, were not keeping you down, what would, what would you dream for your life in those four areas of your being? And then the last action step, so that would really be four step, is to implement, implement it, right? So four steps, not three, four. Put it in your calendar. Take a step today. What could you do today to help you move towards your vision? If in your relationships you want to have more loving relationships, how can you be more loving today, okay, to help bring that in? If we know where we're going, we're empowered. We have to know where we're going, though. So don't lose hope. There's always space for vision. And remember, you can always begin again fresh in any moment you choose. The future is limitless. So many possibilities await, await you. What do you want for you and your life? Ah, so good, so good, so good. Ah, Sending you so, good, so, so good. much love and many blessings. Namaste. You gotta get in here. <laughs> if 
you liked this and want to stay up to date on my teachings and my workshops and my courses, like my upcoming Reclaim Your Peace 12-week meditation journey to awaken the heart of joy, vitality, ease, peace, and purpose. That starts in January. Um, if you're interested in that, um, or if you just want to get more familiar with my work, I'll leave a link below with um, so you can sign up for my newsletter and you'll get all of my videos and teachings freely offered and delivered to you in your inbox yeah. every week. Yeah. Also my yoga class schedule as well as workshops that I'm offering. So I will leave that link below here. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, why don't you do that? There's a little arrow right up above here. Click on it and subscribe. That way you'll know the first, the first time I release any new content. All right, this is Karina and Arthur saying, see you soon. See you, see you soon. Much love and many blessings. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.